Now, uh, as a homework, this is very important that you do this. Consider the poset uh, over the positive integers uh, n plus, ordered by the divisibility relation. Now we looked at a, a you know a small uh, subset of this earlier. Now uh, prove that its Mobius function is given by mu of r comma s is equal to minus one whole raised to t if uh, you know if the if the uh, number s by r is a product of t distinct prime. Okay, so if s by r is a product of t distinct primes. Then mu of r comma is equal to minus one whole raised to t, which is the number of distinct prime factors, uh, distinct primes of s by r. So t must be a precisely the product of t distinct primes. You know, it cannot have like you know a prime square, for example. So in other cases, like all other cases, it is going to be zero. So if s by r is containing a prime power, for example, then this will be zero. But otherwise, it is going to be minus 1 base 2, even uh, we have exactly t distinct primes. Now, so, uh, so this is the, your homework. Now, we look at uh, what we wanted to look in this section, uh, which is the Mobius inversion. So, let uh, p be a poset uh, with a, a 0. So, if you remember, uh, 0. Uh, we defined in the previous lecture, right? So, you know, so this this is actually you know a simplified uh, statement. Uh, in fact, uh, one can uh, one can uh, make it little more general. So what we what we really uh, need is uh, uh, that uh, the poset uh, should have all its uh, you know uh, uh, primary uh, principal uh, order ideals. Uh, to be finite. So, what is the principal order ideal? Okay, I, I'm not going to uh, write the definition, but uh, to be uh, brief. Uh, so, if you, if you take an element, right, all all its uh, uh, all elements which is less than or equal to this must be also uh, in the ideal. Okay, so that is an order ideal. And uh, uh, so, a principal order ideal uh, is uh, the order ideal generated by uh, a, a, a single element. So all its principal order ideals are finite. Then uh, you know, then uh, we can uh, we can uh, we can do uh, the same proof. It will work. So the so the main main idea is that like you know when you when you telescope the sum, you know it should uh, it should uh, stop at uh, some and. Uh, uh, and you know, if, if you are considering finite posets, uh, it's basically equivalent to the same statement because you can always add a zero, right? And then make it uh, uh, make it uh, uh, make it equivalent to this. But uh, for the for our purpose, this is uh, good enough. So now let uh, f and g be functions from uh, you know real valued functions on V. Then g of x is equal to uh, summation uh, y less than or equal to x f of y for every x in p if and only if f of x is equal to summation y less than or equal to x g of y into mu of y comma x for every x in p so where mu is the mobius function of the positive so this is called mobius in inversion okay so it says that this uh, no, the, the you know f and g are functions from uh, p to r, or in fact uh, p to c also uh, works well. Uh, if and only if you know if whenever f, uh, g is expressed as a sum of uh, f this way, right? F is expressed as a sum uh, in this way. <coughs> so this uh, this result is called Mobius inversion, right? And this is uh, quite easy to prove. So what we do is we just use uh, you know the definition of the convolution product and then uh, then you know just work out the detail. Okay? So just uh, look at this. So the summation uh, summation uh, y less than or equal to x g of y into mu of y comma x. So what is that? This is so that is what is given here, right? So 
So we want to show that this is actually f of x, right? So g is given this way. We are going to show that this is precisely what is. So we will start with uh, on the right hand side and then uh, work it out, right? So this is this is basically what is that uh, summation. So this is by the definition of the product, right? So g times mu is defined as summation over y, y less than or equal to x, summation z less than or equal to y, f of z uh, into mu of uh, y x, because uh, I can write g of x in this way. Now, <coughs> this is basically a summation y less than or equal to x, mu of y comma x. Summation overall uh, z belong to be zeta of uh, zy into f of z. So this is where the magic happens. So we use the zeta function here because uh, zeta function, as we observed before, you know, uh, is uh, is one precisely when uh, z is in the uh, interval that we want. Otherwise, it is going to be zero. So therefore, uh, I can just add uh, zeta here to do this. Now I can do a reordering of the summation, right? So changing the uh, order of the summation, this I can write as summation z belong to p, summation uh, y less than or equal to x as zeta of zy into mu of y comma x uh, f of z. But now this one is uh, in uh, as a convolution uh, product, right? And zeta and mu are uh, inverses of uh, each other. So therefore this becomes delta. So therefore, this is basically delta of uh, z comma x, and uh, so we get summation z belonging to be uh, delta uh, of z comma x into f of z. But delta function uh, is precisely one when uh, z is equal to x, and otherwise it is zero. So therefore, the only one time it survives is when z is actually equal to x. So therefore, this is actually equal to f of x, and that is precisely what we wanted to prove, right? So since all these steps are reversible, we, we you know, uh, yeah, so we get uh, this identity. So <clears throat> how to use the Mobius inversion, right? So here is some uh, example. So uh, consider uh, the example that we looked at. Uh, the natural numbers uh, with uh, the uh, the usual order, uh, which is a chain. Okay. Now, in the previous example that we looked at for computing the Mobius function, we only looked at a small uh, subset of n, right, one to n. But uh, one can see that because of the telescoping property that we observed, uh, it works for all the all the n. So therefore, the Mobius function of this faucet is also given by mu of ij is equal to 1 when i is equal to j, it's equal to minus 1 when uh, j is equal to i plus 1 and uh, 0 otherwise. So uh, once you once you have the Mobius function, uh, let us take two functions, let us say g and f, both uh, from, uh, so, so whenever we are going to look at the functions, it must be from, uh, must be from uh, uh, you know f and g from the faucet right uh, to uh, you know real numbers or like uh, uh, you know complex numbers something like that right so therefore uh, we look at two su such functions so let's say that uh, you know g of n is equal to summation i equal to zero to n f of i right. So this is an example that we looked at before, but now we see it in this uh, out of, right? The g of n is equal to summation i equal to 0 to n f of i, right? f is also a function over the integers, g is also a function over the integers. Now, this is uh, if and only if, of course, f of n is equal to by, by the uh, Mobius inversion formula, right? f of n is equal to summation uh, i less than or equal to n, g of i into mu of i comma n. Now, what, what is this, right? Mu of i comma n is precisely 1 when i equal to j and uh, precisely minus 1 when j is equal to i plus 1 and everywhere else it is 0. So, therefore, you will see that this is actually equal to g of n minus g of n minus 1. And this explains 
our earlier uh, observation of the same thing right uh, why it should be this way so this is also because uh, of the uh, mobius inversion formula another example uh, we can look at the uh, positive uh, natural numbers and plus uh, together with the uh, order uh, division divisibility order okay so again uh, i asked you to derive the mobius function of this if you have done that right you would have found out that mu of r comma s is equal to minus 1 whole raised to t if s by r is the product of t distinct primes and uh, otherwise it is zero okay so uh, Assuming that you have uh, computed this, we can uh, now continue, right? So now let f and g be functions uh, defined over n plus, such that uh, uh, let's say g of n is equal to summation over all uh, you know k uh, the devices of uh, let's say so this is n, not d, k and devices of n uh, f of k. Uh, for uh, every n in n okay so g of n is sum over all the devices f of k then mobius inversion says that f of uh, n is given by summation over all uh, devices of uh, n right k divide, dividing n uh, g of k into mu of k comma n right that is the definition uh, of uh, mobius inversion right now Suppose, so, so if you look at mu of r comma s, mu of uh, r comma s only depend on, you know, what is, uh, what is uh, s by r, right? So, I can instead uh, make it a one variable function by saying that mu of s by r, right, over the integers is equal to mu of r comma s. So, the Mobius function can be written in just one variable in this case. And therefore, uh, let me let me write it as mu of uh, you know uh, s by r here so therefore i get mu of n, n by k so therefore i get f of n is equal to summation k dividing n g of k into mu of n by k and this is precisely the classical uh, mobius inversion formula from number three in fact this is uh, probably the reason the name uh, mobius inversion uh, stuck to this technique that is uh, generalization of the Classical Mobius inversion. Now uh, we look at uh, uh, the product theorem. So we define the product of uh, two uh, posets earlier. Right? So consider the uh, Cartesian product of posets P and Q. Right? So the product theorem says that the Mobius uh, function of the product. Uh, uh, p cross q is given by the product of the mobius function okay so mobius function of the product mu uh, p by q of x y uh, x dash y dash is equal to mu p of x x dash times mu q of y y dash so uh, the proof uh, I am omitting the proof here. It's very uh, easy actually, but uh, uh, I can give it as a homework. So prove this above. And uh, there are several ways of proving this. Okay. So one is, uh, you know, by by showing that, you know, so to to show that this is, you know, indeed the uh, indeed the uh, the product. You just need to show that, you know, it satisfies the recurrence, right? Or uh, another proof uh, method is by by expanding this, right? We know what is this product, right? Uh, what is this uh, with respect to the definition? We know what is the def uh, definition of this and this, right? As summations, and then you take uh, the product of these and compare the coefficients and show that okay, they are also the same. So, so there are uh, there are many ways of uh, proving this. So I am omitting the proof, but you can uh, you can work uh, on this. And how many different proofs you can come? And this is very very uh, useful. Okay. So, so 
so how, how to use this well again i will give you this as a homework so we already uh, we already uh, asked you to prove that uh, you know the bernoulli pose at bn uh, is isomorphic to the nth power of uh, a chain on uh, two elements right so where c is the chain of two elements uh, bn is isomorphic to so the product of uh, you know a chain of uh, uh, two elements with itself n times now because of this property we can use now the product theorem right so if you if you know how to compute the you know mobius function of this then you can also compute the mobius function of the uh, bn by the product theorem so now first use this to find the mobius function of bn right show that like it is indeed the one that we discussed and then connect uh, you know it with uh, you know the principle of inclusion and exclusion and derive it as a special case of mobius inversion so mobius inversion is a uh, special case of uh, i mean uh, principle of inclusion and exclusion is a very uh, specific case of mobius inversion so you can prove this uh, again uh, in using this product here uh, Another homework uh, is to prove the dual version of Mobius inversion formula. Uh, that is, uh, suppose the P is a poset having a 1. So, in the first case, we say that okay, P has a 0. And then uh, F1, G are functions uh, defined over P, uh, which are real valued functions. Then again, G of x is equal to summation uh, y containing or greater than or equal to x, F of y. Uh, if and only if uh, f uh, is expressed as summation uh, y uh, greater than or equal to x mu of x y into g of y. Okay? So just uh, note uh, you know uh, the order and also that there is a one here, right? It's different from zero, and then uh, work out the details similarly. <coughs> so this is called a dual version of the uh, Mobius inversion formula. Now, I want to uh, wind up uh, you know, with a slightly different uh, topic uh, called uh, involutions. I will, it's a very, 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 very uh, brief uh, introduction to involutions. We just uh, look at a single example and then uh, we, you know, formally define it and then uh, that's it. So, let us look at an example. Suppose you are asked to prove this is something which you have already done, right, prove combinatorially. Uh, the summation k is equal to 0 to n, n choose k into minus 1 raised to k is equal to 0. Okay, for n greater than equal to 1. Now, <coughs> we, we already have uh, seen a couple of proofs of this, but now I want to prove this using, let us say, involution. So, what is involution? I will define uh, soon, but uh, for the time being, let us just look at uh, the proof. So, uh, let uh, me denote by x the power set of the set 1 to n, right, uh, which is the base set of the Bernoulli poset, right. So, let us look at the uh, set x and then you take any, 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 uh, you know, subset of 1 to n and then define the sign of the set s as uh, minus 1 raised to the cardinal g of s. So the sign of the set is minus one whole raised to its cardinality. So this I can define for every subset uh, of one to n or every element of the power set. Now, you know, for uh, uh, you know for any k, right? N choose k subsets S of uh, you know the set one to n has cardinality k, right? That is by the definition of n choose k, right? That is what uh, we call n choose k. And uh, uh, therefore, uh, all of them have sign uh, minus 1 raised to k, right? Minus 1 raised to k because cardinality of s is k. Mm -hmm. So we have n choose k uh, subsets with uh, uh, the sign minus 1 raised to k. Okay. So what uh, I can write the sum uh, that we were looking at. Uh, summation over all uh, you know all the uh, all the elements in x sine of s 
is precisely summation k is equal to 0 to n n choose k because that that many uh, elements have sin minus 1 dash k right so n choose k into minus 1 dash k okay now let us define uh, a function i from x to x as follows so the function i takes s right thus you know s is a subset uh, of uh, 1 to n so uh, so i of s takes uh, you know the set s to s union singleton 1 if 1 is not in s okay so if the element 1 is not uh, in the set s then you know i add it right? so i just add it to s on the other hand suppose s contains 1 then i'll just remove it from s so it is s minus singleton 1 so i takes s to s union 1 if 1 is not in s and it will take s to s minus uh, singleton 1 if uh, 1 is actually in s so we can observe that i uh, is its own inverse right i of i of comma s i mean i of i of s is equal to s because you know I, uh, if phi of s is is this form then i'm going to add it back right in the you know the next step i of i of s if it is this form, I am going to remove it. So in in whichever case, I will uh, I will get i of i of s is equal to s. So therefore, i is its own inverse, and uh, i square is equal to identity, right? So i into i is is uh, the identity of x. So i is a bijection because uh, you know i square is identity, i is a bijection, and uh, of course again its own inverse. Now, what is the sign of i of s? Well, because uh, s takes elements from whatever its cardinality to either its cardinality minus 1 or its cardinality plus 1. Right? I am going to either add or subtract exactly one element. So, this will be minus sign of s because minus 1 raised to the cardinality is different. Right? And i pairs each uh, positive object with a negative object right? because, uh, you know, that is what uh, i does right so if this was of sign positive then it's going to as uh, a set with the negative sign because the cardinality uh, the parity of the cardinality changes so therefore summation sign of s is equal to zero if, if you if you take all uh, all uh, uh, s and x it sign of s is equal to zero So, so, and, and that, that is precisely what uh, we had here, right? So, that is precisely this thing. So therefore, uh, by this uh, uh, observation that we have shown that it is zero. So, this is a uh, proof using the uh, idea of uh, involution. So, what is involution? Well, so, an involution uh, on a set X is a function that maps uh, from X to itself such that uh, you know its uh, square is the identity uh, which means that uh, i is a bijection and uh, i is its own inverse now if you take uh, an involution uh, i call uh, fix of i as the set of all elements that is not unchanged under i okay so all the elements x in x such that i of x is equal to x itself so this set may be uh, empty because you know i can change you know, for example in the previous case we saw that this set is actually empty right? because you no know, we may take all the odd sets to even sets and even sets to odd sets so therefore there is no element that is fixed set so fix of i can be uh, uh, the empty set also <coughs> now uh, i is a, a sign traversing uh, Involution with respect to a sine function SGN. Okay, let's say that a sine function SGN maps uh, x to plus 1 and minus 1. Uh, so I is sine traversing if and only if for all the elements that are not fixed by I, right? So all the elements that are not fixed by I, the sign uh, actually changes, right? So sine of I of x is equal to sine of x uh, minus sine of x. So of course the fixed elements. 
will not change the sign, right? But the sign function is already fixed, right? We are not going to change the sign function. We are only looking at what happens to the uh, elements after the, uh, you know, the, the image, right? Under the image. So, if sine of i of x is equal to minus sine of x for every uh, x in uh, in x minus fix of i, right? Those elements that are not fixed by i. Then I say I is a sign reversing uh, involution. And then uh, we have the involution theorem. Right? So, what is the involution theorem? That, uh, let us say that uh, <coughs> X be uh, a set which is signed with, uh, uh, you know, a function SGN and I be a sign reversing involution on X with respect to the function SGN. Then summation uh, X in X uh, sine of X is actually equal to summation over all the elements fixed by I sine of X. Okay, so this is the involution theorem okay? and this is uh, quite uh, useful you will see uh, in your homeworks and uh, the proof is uh, you know almost trivial right so so just uh, looking at it we can see that why this should be the case right because if you look at all the elements uh, that are not fixed by i right so i basically uh, takes you know the you know the, the elements that are not fixed and changes the sign and because the the square right you know i applied again will get back right in that it is a it's a it's a it's a bijection right so we can see that the number of elements that has the plus sign must be equal to the number of elements that has the minus sign right and therefore they will cancel out and those are the guys which are outside the fix of i so therefore everything else will be uh, uh, you know added to zero and therefore the remaining things will be those elements in fix of i uh, with uh, uh, its own sign so that is the that is the uh, idea right so that's an informal proof now if you want to formally prove this we can also do that right so just by defining uh, these things right so let's say that x plus is a set of all uh, elements in uh, not fixed by i whose sign is plus one x minus is those elements not fixed by i whose sign is minus 1. Then the involution i uh, restricted to, uh, you know, it's a function which is restricted to the set on x plus uh, is something which takes x plus to x minus, right? And then the involution restricted to x minus takes x minus to x plus. Now, we know that i is an involution, therefore it's a bijection. So, therefore, uh, i x plus uh, must be you know i x minus inverse and similarly uh, uh, you know vice versa and therefore uh, because this is a bijection we know that x plus right you know the function going from i x plus to i x minus i mean x plus to x minus is a bijection their cardinalities must be the same and therefore uh, the summation over all x belongs to x a uh, sine of x is equal to uh, if you want, of course, you can write summation over all uh, x in x plus, summation over x in x minus, uh, again the summation. And this will be cardinality of x plus and cardinality of x minus and uh, the opposite sign, so they cancel out. And what remains is uh, over all the fixed elements, uh, the sine of x. And that is the uh, formal proof. Okay, so here is a couple of homeworks. Uh, using involutions prove that uh, you know this identity binomial identity summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 raised to k uh, 2n choose k is equal to minus 1 whole raised to n 2n minus 1 choose n again you can think of you know proofs using involutions you can think of proofs without using involutions combinatorial proof again and you can also look at algebraic proof so you have three different ways of proofs you can think of proof. but in this homework, uh, you should do this. Then, as we mentioned, uh, uh, no, I did not mention this, maybe, right? You can also prove uh, inclusion exclusion formula using involution. Okay. So, so give a proof of uh, inclusion exclusion formula using involution. 
i think uh, with that uh, we stop for today and uh, see you uh, next week